Hello chess friends and welcome to the channel. I'm back with a fantastic game played two days ago in day two of the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz. Nepomniachi with the white pieces against the best young American player Jeff Rixion with black. Let's get started. Ian Nepomniachi opens the game with e4 and Jeff Rixion answers with the Aliak in defense, knight to f6, attacking the central pawn. This is a surprise weapon also in the style of Magnus Carlsen. Here comes e5, the knight is under attack, moves to d5, and now d4 to conquer the center. Xiong answers with d6, attacking the most advanced pawn, and now knight to f3. This variation, that is the main line, is called the modern variation. Simple development in order to maintain a space advantage thanks to the e5 push. Now d captures on e5, and white recaptures with the knight. Here comes g6. The idea is clear, is to develop the dark square bishop in fiancetto. And now the first uh, inaccuracy, queen to f3, that uh, is threatening checkmating one on f7, but uh, this move is rushed because it's too simple for black to defend the position. In fact, here comes bishop to e6, developing and protecting f7. Now bishop to c4, attacking the knight, but the knight is already well protected, and black can develop the bishop in fiancetto. Bishop to g7, another queen move, queen to b3. Again, this move is not much required because it's simpler to play short castle, but now the queen is targeting b7. Only three games in database, but not the amount of players with white that wins two times and loses once. Knight to c6 now seems the best move for black, but there are many good continuations for black. Before watching what Jeff Rixion played, let's briefly watch probably the best continuation. Best continuation is knight to c6. Now the central knight is two times under attack, so most likely the knight will capture on c6. This pawn that was under attack now recaptures and is not under attack anymore. The knight is well protected. The bishop is also targeting d4, so Probably c3 is one of the best moves. Now rook to b8 comes with tempo against the queen. Queen back to c2. Then short castle for black. Sooner or later, bishop to f5. Another move with tempo. And black is uh, going out from the opening quite fine. But let's go back to our game. After queen to b3, played by Nepomniachi, that is targeting b7. Jeff Rixiong plays a novelty. B captures. Bishop captures on e5. Move 8, this is a novelty, the game is already original, and of course white recaptures with the pawn on e5. Only now comes knight to c6, the pawn is under attack, what to, what to play now for white? Short castle is still one of the best options. If you want to protect this pawn, bishop to b5 attacking and pinning the knight to the king, so the knight can't capture in any case, is a good move, instead Nepomniachi grabs the pawn, captures the pawn on b7 with the queen. This move wins the pawn, is also a tempo move because he's attacking the knight. Problem is that uh, it loses the game on the spot because uh, Xion continues with knight in d, goes to b4. This is a multi-purpose super move. And let's watch uh, what, uh, how many good things uh, this move does. At first, the knight on c6 is now protected. This knight is blocking all the way out of the white queen, is also threatening a terrible capture with check and fork, and the central bishop is also under attack. So, fantastic move, but let's say the truth. A move that uh, we can also play if we pay attention. And so, what to play? Before watching what Nepomniachi played, let's understand why Ian didn't capture on e6. Let's watch what happens. Because after bishop captures on e6, the f pawn recapture and the queen in any case is lost. Because after short castle, there is rook to b8 and there is no way out for the queen. And let's go back to this variation. Bishop captures, f captures. Also, even if white now moves away the queen trying to uh, escape we notice that the queen is always lost because here comes knight to c2 with check. The king can't move near the knight because there is the queen that is controlled in the d file. 
can't move to f1 because queen to d1 is checkmating one. The only move for the king is king to e2, but the knight jumps back with check and fork, and the queen is lost. So that's why Nepomniachi doesn't capture, doesn't change the bishop on e6. Let's go back to the super move. So Nepomniachi continues with bishop to b5. The idea is clear. Is to, the queen is lost, but the idea is to give away the queen for one pawn, one knight, and one rook, trying to escape this terrible position this way. But Jeff Friction has other plans in mind, because now there is knight captures on c2 with check. Again, we know that the king can only move to e2. There is time to capture the rook if black wants to do so, but black simply play short castle bishop captures on c6 now the rook is under attack but uh, there is no time to uh, to end the plan that nepomniachi has in mind because here comes rook to b8 queen under attack the queen captures on a7 and now knight back to d4 that is also a fork the king moves back to e1 again knight to c2 we check jeffrey xiong is playing cat and mouse because hey, we know that the king can only move back to e2, because after king to f1, queen to d1 is already checkmate. So let's go back to our knight to c2 with check. The king moves to e2, and here comes rook to b6. Rook to b6, important move, because it's blocking the queen's protection and a way out for the queen that can't move back to help his king. Knight to a3, trying to mobilize the pieces that here on the queen side never moved, but knight to d4 comes with check, king to e1, the bishop is lost with tempo, because the white queen is also under attack, the knight is also attacking e5, the queen can't protect the pawn because the knight is also controlling a5, and so here comes queen to a4. The knight captures on e5, Nepomniachi tries to develop with tempo, bishop to h6, but there is no need to lose time moving this rook, because here comes queen to d5. Queen to d5, threatening to capture with tempo. And so what happens? It happens that Nepomniachi doesn't capture the rook, but uh, let's briefly watch what happens. After bishop captures on f8, the queen captures on g2 attacking the rook. Rook to f1, now bishop to h3, and nothing can stop queen capture on f1 with check. And after that, checkmate is coming. Even if the king moves away, then the rook is coming, the queen, the bishop, and his checkmate in few moves. So that's why Nepo doesn't capture the rook, but after bishop to h6 and queen to d5, he continues with f3, closing this diagonal. But here comes the final crushing move. Rook, uh, sorry, rook captures on b2. Again, the bishop can capture the rook because the bishop is protecting the important d2 square. After, of course, and in this position, Nepomniachi resigns because after bishop captures on f8, there is queen to d2 with check, king to f1, queen to f2, checkmate. So let's go back to the final move of this game, that is rook captures on b2. Best continuation for white is knight to c2, but here is knight to d3 with check. King to f1, and then another power move, bishop to h3. Bishop to h3, the pawn can't capture because the queen will recapture and is checkmating too. And not only that, the bishop is pinning this uh, pawn, and uh, at the next move, the queen will capture with check, and again, checkmate is coming. So the pawn grabbers won't be very happy watching this game. Nepomniachi wanted to join them, but was harshly punished by the young Jeffrey. A very nice game, also something that uh, we are not used to watch at this level. I hope that uh, you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like the video and to subscribe to the channel, because we will meet again tomorrow with new games. Goodbye!